Today, we want to give you the five minute breakdown that will arm you with the knowledge you need to set your bike up and also remove any risk of you forking up your high performance front suspension. Fork setup can set the tone for our entire bike. Some people say that we want to bottom out our fork every single run, but others say that how firm we want our front end is based solely on feel. An easier way to think about this might be that a firmer setup will keep the bike geometry more consistent. As a fork goes into its stroke, it steepens the head tube angle. A bike that rides higher in the fork stroke will also ride with a slacker head tube angle. Now this might be what you want if you're riding steep terrain. A softer setup will keep the chassis and the rider more stable. As the front wheel takes a big hit and it forces the fork up into its stroke, the chassis can stay at a more consistent height, which will aid in tracking. So is one better than the other? Well, it's hard to say, and it's really about preference. However, you do see some of the world's best riders, including Mr. Setup himself, Loic Bruni, running forks that look quite happy to go deep into their stroke relatively often. So maybe there's something to a softer setup. To get the perfect setup, we need a combination of correct spring rate, so how much pressure is in your air fork, and correct damping. Today's video is supported by Olin's, and so we're using their forks as an example. So I want you to unwind all of the external adjustments to the full open position. Simple way to think of this is like a tap. Fully counterclockwise is like a tap being full open, letting that oil run through unrestricted. Full clockwise is the most closed position, so the oil is restricted. Next, I want you to look at the recommended settings which might be found on the lower fork leg here, but make a note of the pressure that you intend to use. Some high-end forks even have more than one air valve. In this case, the ramp up chamber is gonna be at the bottom, and the main chamber is gonna be at the top. And if you do have a ramp up chamber, make sure to set that one first. To ensure best performance, we need the positive and negative chambers to be balanced. Now to do that, we're gonna equalize them by cycling the fork. So simply set your main chamber to your desired pressure and push the fork into its travel several times. As you do this, the pressure of the main chamber will drop. Keep setting it back to your desired PSI until the main chamber doesn't decrease in pressure even after you cycle the fork. This means that both chambers are now at the same pressure. And now let's set sag with a focus on consistency. Measure sag on a level surface in the same position every time. Now that might even include putting on any riding kit that you wear, or especially if you ride with a heavy pack, probably throw that on too. Once we're on the bike here, we're gonna cycle the fork a few times without touching the brakes because we don't want the fork to bind up in any way. Once we do that, we can push the O-ring gently down to the seal and without lurching, dismount the bike. Next up, we're gonna measure the distance between the bottom of the O-ring and the top of the seal. From there, you can simply work out what percentage that number is of the total amount of travel. Typically, on your shorter travel bikes, you could have as little as 15% sag, trail and enduro bikes as much as 20%. And if you wanted a soft, ground-hugging downhill fork, some people might go as much as 25% sag, but a good base is about 20%. You can fine tune how the air spring supports your weight, especially towards the end of the stroke, with the ramp up chamber, if you have one. Rebound damping affects how fast the suspension can return to full travel. We don't want our fork to be too fast, but if your rebound is too slow, the fork can get packed down in its travel, which can make the fork feel dull or too firm. Now, a good way to set a base rebound rate is to compress the fork and then pull your hands away. In the ideal situation, the front wheel is not gonna bounce up off the ground. Now, this will give us a great base setting for rebound. But when it comes to compression, we should consider two things, your inputs and the trail's inputs. We want the bike to support us. We don't wanna push into the transfer of a jump and feel like we're falling into the front of the bike. High-end suspension will let us add support through the compression settings, instead of just leaving us with no other option than drastically increasing the air pressure. When we're out on trail, our movements and how we move our mass around the bike 
are relatively slow speed, especially in comparison to say, hitting a square edge at 30 kilometers an hour. Now increasing or reducing the amount of support we feel is done through low speed damping. If your fork feels like it's falling through the stroke on steep terrain or it wallows as you move your weight around, try increasing the low speed damping here on the dial by turning it clockwise. Now, if the fork feels inactive or uncomfortable, perhaps try reducing the low speed damping by turning it counterclockwise. For high speed damping, it affects the total rate of oil flow through the whole system, but it particularly has a large effect on massive hits that use lots of the stroke very quickly. For instance, going deep off of a big drop, square edge hits, or plowing through rough terrain. Now, a way to think about it, slow speed adjustments really affect the inputs that come from the rider, and the high speed compression adjustments affect how the fork deals with the rough terrain. For more information, stay tuned for a video on how to tune your bike for balance. For your first ride, set both of the compression adjustments to the middle, counting your clicks from closed, and then make adjustments to suit. Setting up a fork can be a dynamic and rewarding process, so find a good base setting but then don't be afraid to experiment. With these forks, they have three adjustment settings on here for high speed compression. You can think of them maybe as comfort cruising, party mode, or downhill domination. And you can swap between them to suit your riding, the trails, or the conditions that day. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video on fork setup, but stay tuned because we've got one for the rear shock as well.